workshops. Pick up new power tools with a tap. Pick up the things you need at our convenient lockers. Or even pick them up right from your doorstep. Pick up more of what you need so you can do more of what you love. The Home Depot app. How doers get more done. Skills, but she's playing the four so she can guard one through five. The owner of this Apple Watch has taken a hard fall and is not responding to their watch. The emergency location is latitude 47.7, longitude minus 117.5 with an estimated search radius of 41 meters. This message will repeat in five seconds. Great defensive, great two-way player. Highest ranked UF recruit since 2013. If you're just joining us, first quarter action from Gainesville, Jordan Merritt, who's fouled on the way up. Florida Gators seeking their first win in conference play, their opening game against Mississippi State Pilts Pone. And so now they have the challenge of trying to pick up a win against the 13th ranked Georgia Bulldogs who too are trying to rebound from a loss Thursday. For the five stars. Today's pros need today's tools and the Home Depot is here to help with job site delivery to keep you on site and on schedule and equipment rentals to make sure you can take on any job. Plus, when you join Pro Extra, you'll earn perks on every dollar you spend. Earn perks four times faster when you join. Register and use your Pro Extra credit card. New tech, new tools, new ways to grow your business, all at the Home Depot. How pros get more done. There's been on the floor for the Gators of score. Jordan Merritt with three points here today. Kiki Smith, Lavender Briggs, Nina Ricards also on the board for Florida. The Gators coming off an excellent non-conference season. Ten wins entering league play today. For a reminder, too, for folks at home just joining us, Georgia's all-everything every, all post player, Jenna Stady, not suiting up in this game. She did not play in the loss against LSU at home. And this looks kind of eerily similar to the start for Georgia against LSU, just trying to find the rhythm offensively because Jenna Sadie really does so much because she's involved in almost every play, whether she's screening, she's scoring, she's rebounding, she's, she's involved. So Georgia needs to settle down. They eventually did in LSU, but obviously Florida jumping on the Bulldogs here in this first quarter. An 11-5 advantage nearly halfway through the first quarter and the turnaround jumper for Nina Ricards. And she can be yet another scoring option in addition to Kiki Smith and Lavender Briggs for the Gators. We talk about that loss to LSU. The Bulldogs nearly came back, overcoming a 16-point deficit, having that lead in the fourth quarter behind an amazing performance by Q Morrison. She tried to poke her hand in that one, and a whistle call. I mean, Q Morrison against LSU put the team on her back. I mean, I don't even know what the score would have been if Q Morrison wasn't out there, but she led the way for Joni Taylor. As we step aside quickly from Exact Tech Arena, a 6 nothing run for the Florida Gators. And we got a little too antsy there, Steffi. We're going to stay right here at 13-5 as Kiki Smith will go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. Smith, the second leading scorer on the season for the Gators, averaging about 12 points a game. She has been on a tear the last five registering in double digits in each of the last five games. And when you watch this Florida Gator team, all eyes have to be on the captain on the floor for the Gators, number one in white here today, and that's Kiki Smith, who has just uh, gotten better and better as the graduate checks out briefly, but her team holding on to a 10-point lead early on.
Chloe Chapman going all the way to the hoop and the foul called against Bertie Rimdahl. Chapman will go to the line and shoot a couple, the junior out of Mitchellville, Maryland. That's part of a look that Florida will give uh, their opponents defensively is some full court pressure, but I like the fact that Georgia was ready for it. They were prepared. Chapman just kind of turned the corner and went right down the lane for the for an offensive opportunity. Chapman knocking down both free throws. Trailing by eight. Halfway point of the first quarter. Faith Duke underneath the basket, and somehow Whoa. she is able to get that shot up, and it goes in. Morrison saves it. A couple of bodies go to the floor. Bates has it, and then last touch by the Gators. All five Gators have scored, and that's the fifth right here. That's Faith Duke. She gets on the board, stretches the lead out to 10 for Florida. Hard work? Sure. Guesswork? No thank you. Because when you're on a mission, you want to get it right the first time. That's where the Home Depot comes in. With an app to rent and reserve the right tools with just a tap. With convenient image search options. And with the ability to see how something looks in your space before you even buy it. It's how the Home Depot takes the guesswork out of the hard work. The Home Depot app. How doers get more done. The Florida Gators have jumped off to a quick start, shooting six of seven from the floor, and that's helped them get out to a 17-7 lead. Steffi Sorensen, Tiffany Green here with you. And how big would a win be here today against the 13th ranked team? We already saw number one go down earlier this week, Steffi. I mean, the, the quality and the depth of the league this year, I mean, it's, it's never been better. I mean, top to bottom, we saw – Missouri take down South Carolina. Arkansas had Tennessee on the ropes. I mean, I think this is a terrific opportunity for the Gators. We talked a lot about uh, Kiki Smith so far. She hasn't beat Florida State this season. She, she got that off the list. She hasn't beat Georgia today. Can she achieve that today? We will find out. So far, a good start, though, for the Florida Gators, up by 10. Gators coming in, winners of four straight, and that's through – the hands and legs of Mallory based on the floor. It's the Gators who come up with it. Rimdahl allows everyone to sit on the half court. And for those of you listening, we apologize for our audio quality, having some technical difficulties, but certainly delighted that we can bring you this game on this Sunday afternoon. So when you're talking about not having your leading scorer and rebounder on the floor in Jenna Stadium, as you mentioned already, Steffi, what does this yeah. Georgia have to do? Who has to step up in your eyes? I think it really starts with their defense. You know, I really do. Georgia is a terrific defensive team. they got to get easy looks. They've had opportunities, looks like that. Obviously, Reagan Richardson able to, to capitalize, or excuse me, Mallory Bates. But if they can crank up their defensive intensity, get some steals, some fast break opportunities, just get some more confidence. Right now, just a little bit out of out of sync. I think defense leads the way for Georgia. You're absolutely right. It's been a cornerstone of Joni Taylor's team since she took over in her seventh season. And what we've seen then, too, especially over last year when they made it to the SEC championship game, offense also emerged and really helped them out in, in, in key moments so that they could feed off of that defense, missed opportunities there on that end. But, however, you're seeing the ability to rebound, how important that is for Georgia to crash the boards. And you just look here, those defensive ranks for this Georgia team and how solid they are. As Faith Duke going to the locker room, quickly taking off the court. We'll monitor the health of Duke. 
But 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 Jolie mm-hmm. Taylor, who has created one of the best defenses uh, year in and year out in the Southeastern Conference, that says a lot. And among the best in the country of just how well they play, how much pressure they put on you and make you feel uncomfortable, wanting to get you out of what you do well. And there, Q Morrison on the steal. She is an elite defender, and she takes it all the way in. So defense turns to offense, and that's what's going to help to spark them. Dozen points now for Georgia. Yeah, there's no question when they started to come back against LSU just a few days ago, they started to get a little bit more turnovers, some blocked shots. And then they were more energetic, more confident on the offensive side of the floor. When you need a bucket, you call Hugh Morrison. She's one of the best two-way players in this league, and her offense has been tremendous this season. But, you know, she has terrific on-ball presence. She doesn't make it easy for Jordan Merritt to make that pass. And that way she can get an easy bucket, easy run out, set up their defense. Last year's SEC Co-Defensive Player of the Year, she was near a triple-double Thursday. And she had a career-best 26 points and 10 assists. Just three rebounds shy of that triple-double. So Q Morrison continuing her stellar career at Georgia. Trying to force that one inside. Nicholson was able to hang on to it. Five to go on the shot clock. And the Bulldogs lose possession. They have turn to credit it over. Florida's defense, Tiffany. Florida's defense in this first quarter has been really good because of their on-ball pressure. They're not letting it, letting easy passes get into the post because Georgia does like to play a lot through their post. Some high-low on-ball screens, and they're capitalizing and playing with energy on the offensive side of the floor. Well, Florida two for two from three-point range. That ended a scoring drought of nearly three minutes for the Florida Gators. Off the mark there. Opening quarter from Gainesville. The Florida Gators in their SEC opener, technically, since their game against Mississippi State was postponed. And we've seen a number of games, and as we will continue to see as a trend, uh, much like we did last year with games being postponed due to the COVID protocols for this week, to be in fact, the exact. Merritt finds Smith. Smith with the lefty. And it drops. 8 of 10 from the floor for the Gators in this opening period. Under a minute to go. Bates face up. She gets it to roll around. The Mallory Bates. Senior out of Roanoke, Virginia, and comes back on the other end. Good defense down low. They move the ball around, and Jordan Merritt once again knocking down threes. She's got a couple here tonight. Perfect from the floor. So already at her season average. About a five-second differential between... Shot clock, game clock, bounce pass from Morrison. Bates puts it up, back rim. Saved by Briggs. Final seconds of the opening period. Can Ricards get a shot off? No, the defense from Georgia holds. The Florida Gators couldn't miss in the opening quarter. 9 of 11 from the field, including a couple of triples by Jordan Merritt. They lead 25-14 after one. Today's pros need today's tools, and the Home Depot is here to help. With job site delivery to keep you on site and on schedule, and equipment rentals to make sure you can take on any job. Plus, when you join Pro Extra, 
you'll earn perks on every dollar you spend. Earn perks four times faster when you join. Register and use your Pro Extra credit card. New tech, new tools, new ways to grow your business, all at the Home Depot. How pros get more done. Fun opening start for Georgia and Florida. Mallory Bates leading the way for the Bulldogs. Jordan Merritt pacing everyone in this game with 10 points. And when we talked to Kelly Ray Finley earlier in the week, she mentioned just how well this team had come into this game, feeling like they had some really good practices. Their mindset was in the right place to try to take down a, a ranked Georgia team. You know, it was interesting, Tiffany, when we talked to her, and she said, you know, she's all about let's let's be us, let's play, you know, let's do our thing. And the, having to define that for the team when they're looking to her, well, well, who is us? What is us? You know, that's how, how defining culture and how you want your philosophy to play out on the court and your team to buy in. But there's no doubt that they, they're playing confident, hungry. Their backs are against the wall. No one's talking about them. No one believes in them. And they can play free. And it's clear today that they are understanding who they are. Pick to finish 11th in the preseason poll. Once again, another steal and going right up. Hugh Morrison was able to come down with it. And the Bulldogs maintain possession. Reagan Richardson with the ball in her hands. One of the two McDonald's All-American freshmen who've been added to this Georgia program. She loses the handle. Kiki Smith back the other way. One of the best in terms of steals nationally off the mark. Drawing the foul. That will go against Christina Moore who's seeing her first action of the game. A senior out of Sydney, Australia. You know, Tiffany, when you talk to... When we were talking to Kelly Ray Finley just a few days ago about this matchup and, and how physical Georgia is, I mean, they've got a ton of rotation down low, physical guards, and, you know, Kelly Ray Finley said, I think we're pretty physical too. And, and it's true. I mean, they have physicality in the post and especially on the perimeter. When you think about the absence of Jenna Staley, and, and we were kind of discussing this during the, the break briefly, Steffi, just about her presence on the court and what it means and how when she's not there, it's glaring. And, and, and you went to a statistic that you said, okay, well, you know, look, great. They're, they're wonderful on defense, but that's when Jalen State is also on the floor, too. Well, certainly she's your rim protector, and she's one of the best shot blockers in the country as Jordan Mary continues to shine offensively, but when you can put a lot of ball pressure, that changes your makeup when she's not out there to protect the rim and Florida just continues the hot hand. And, and folks at home, Georgia is one of the best perimeter defenders, defensive teams in the country. Right now, looking a little off balance on the road and they have played well away from Stegman Coliseum, 4-0 so far this season, but trailing by a big chunk, and Kiki Smith is adding to that lead for Florida. Well, I think Sarah Barker, Ashley, you know, she, she's got to step up. Sarah Ashley Barker, excuse me, she, she had a terrific half in the second against LSU. Joni Taylor wants her to put forth two consistent halves. Nice take mm -hmm. that shot for Jordan Isaac. Isaac. Jordan Isaac. Mm -hmm. Isaac. Marin loses it. Chloe Chapman steps in, kicks it all the way in. So back to back buckets now by Georgia. Trying to sneak through. Nobody. Wide open for Rimdahl. And she couldn't get it to go down.
There's Barker right there coming off that 14-point performance. And Joni Taylor will want her to do more of that in this ball game as Sarah Ashley Barker says, I'm going to register the number that's on my jersey. And she pulls her team with intent. Hard work? Sure. Guesswork? No thank you. Because when you're on a mission, you want to get it right the first time. That's where the Home Depot comes in, with an app to rent and reserve the right tools with just a tap. With convenient image search options, and with the ability to see how something looks in your space before you even buy it. It's how the Home Depot takes the guesswork out of the hard work. The Home Depot app, how doers get more done. We go back to Thursday in Athens and Sarah Ashley Barker helped bring her team into the overtime period thanks to that trifecta. We're going all the way back to NC State, and that was the game winner in overtime. Oh, my gosh, I got a little overzealous there. Stephanie, <laughs> ring me back in, partner. Ring me back in. Look, I watched that game, oh, and that's on me. That's it, on me. It, felt, it, it felt like a late March type of game. Not a prediction, just an observation. And the way that Sarah Ashley Barker closed out that game is why Joni Taylor, you know, sees – just how good that she can be. Last year, she was frank. She said, Sarah didn't know what she was doing out there. She knows now what she needs to be doing. She just wants it for a full four quarters. I love Sarah Ashley Barker's game, though. She's so tough. She's elite around the rim. She does everything for them. Faith Duke back on the floor for the Gators. Let's, let's continue with that conversation with Sarah Ashley Barker because when you get off to slow starts in the first half and then start to pick it up in the second half, as a player, Steffi, what did you do to gain some momentum early in games to get out faster? It's a good question, and it does vary from player to player. I mean, some players, they need to get to the free throw line and just see the ball go through the hoop. Some players, a tip, a block, a steal, that's what energizes them. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden they're looking for their own shot. And I think for, for Sarah Ashley Barker, she's just got to stay engaged. If the plays aren't running for her, make a play, get, a, get an offensive rebound, something like that to get herself going. But I think she's she just got to be in attack mode, and I've seen that since this break. Attacking right there on cue, Steffi, and Sarah Ashley Barker now picking it up. Seven points here today, three of four from the floor. Georgia shooting the ball better in this second quarter as they've settled in on the road. You reflect back on some of the non-conference wins to see maybe as an indicator of how they'll perform in conference play that OT win against NC State, the number two team in the country at the time, and you had that overtime win against Notre Dame as well. So this is a team that can hang in there, grind it out, do whatever is necessary, the spin move. And it won't fall for Michaela Coombs, but the putback action by the true freshman, Jillian Hollingshead, is able to cut this lead to single digits. Morrison, jumper, won't go. I mean, there's no doubt about it, Tiffany. Georgia's not the same without Jenna Stady on the floor. I mean, they're going to do their best. Everyone right now is trying to do their best with players being out and um, in protocols and, and trying to, to do, do their best to get back on the floor. So, you know, there's, younger players are going to get more time right now and, and get some experience and some minutes, which will help them later on this season. But Georgia's different. And we're just trying to capitalize on that opportunity because a win is a win for them. This is their first game on the road for their next five will be away from home. Mm -hmm. 
Morrison, who had the ball in their hand, guarded by Kiki Smith. Morrison, we mentioned that 26 point performance, two points held to just two so far this afternoon, 440 to go in the first half. And you know what's interesting, Tiffany, is we really haven't even talked about Lavender Briggs. I mean, she's a mm-hmm. special talent. Just two points for the Gators so far in this in this game. In seasons past, I feel like if she didn't get 20, Florida wasn't in a game. That's been different this season. Well, you think Briggs, who has the ball up the right side of the court, who has led the Gators in scoring ever since she put on a Florida uniform. And that one is rejected there by Hollington. Put the top off of that one. I mean, there's a reason why Joni Taylor offered her a scholarship when she was in seventh grade. Okay, she was a star then, and she's going to be one in the red and black. So much upside. She's just just scratching the surface for what she can become. Peach State native, SEC SEC freshman of the week after that great performance against South Alabama. And here she comes up with a loose ball. Morrison stepping in after the face. Can't get the bounce. Picard kicks it out to Briggs. Briggs. From that A on the Florida logo, won't go. Up ahead, and Barker trying to catch up to it. Last touch by Briggs. And we think Lavender Briggs, is, as you were mentioning, Steffi, still getting back to her old self, coming off of you know, injury, and she's still trying to get back into shape or form, and even as I say that, she still leads her team in scoring, and, and she's only going to get better as the season continues. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's battling, you know, a few injuries. She, she definitely doesn't look the same, but she's, any time that she can take off, to get back, get, get more rehab, you know, she, and she's hard on herself. She's very critical of herself. She came to Florida because it was a team that she felt like she could get them in the conversation to compete for an SEC championship. At the University of Florida, the women's basketball program is the only one at that school that has never won an SEC title. And she that's the reason why she chose the Gators. And so I know that she's frustrated when she can't necessarily play the way that she wants to play. But still, she's still leading the team in scoring. I mean, she is a special player for sure. The Gators have gone cold the last several trips down the floor. Chance for the Bulldogs to get even closer. And they're able to do so thanks to the layup from Michaela Coombs. Coombs out of Buford, Georgia. And a traveling violation. So the Gators hand the ball right back over as Georgia now trailing by just six. Yeah, that's one of the things Florida has to be careful of is kind of stalling out offensively because Georgia can turn their defense up, turn it into offense, and then taking care of the basketball. Right now the Gators have 12 turnovers and Georgia's been able to convert those into nine points. Georgia's trail since the tip, but in this second quarter, turning it around and playing well again, as we mentioned, without Jenna Stady, who has been listed day-to-day, unavailable due to health and safety protocols. Mallory Bates checking back in the game. She, along with Barker, have a team high of seven points. Waiting for it. Coombs wanted to take it all the way, kissing it high off the glass, and Michaela Coombs has her team within four. 
saw part of last year, Coons was in the conversation for SEC Sixth Woman of the Year. And there, good defense by Bates. Up ahead, out in transition. There, Coombs running, can't get it to go. And Zoisha Smith brought it down. We'll see what the call on the floor is. And it's a personal foul against Lavender Briggs. And you can feel, Tiffany, this, the momentum switching in favor of Georgia. Florida just not shooting the ball as well and then turning it over, and that plays right into the hands of Georgia. What they want to do, get the ball out quick on misses or makes, get something down the lane. And this is an easy way to come back. Knocking down a couple of free throws, and Zoisha Smith hits one of two. Right now, taking care of the basketball and then trying to just look for your shot in the process to see it go through the hoop. It's been more than six minutes since the Gators have gotten a bucket. They pass it up and into, into the hands of the Bulldogs. Chapman looking back to the bench. Assesses. And attack. Excuse me, that's Michaela Coombs. And then on the way up, Lavender Briggs registering her second personal foul. Smith will shoot a two. Georgia being really aggressive on the glass. Ten offensive rebounds. In this first half, just trying to get a couple extra looks within a possession. I like the minutes that Zoisha Smith has brought off the bench for Joni Taylor. She's been aggressive. She's just trying to make plays. Well, I remember Joni Taylor told, telling us last year just how improved she saw Zoisha Smith be on the court as. Kiki Smith able to come away with that one, the steal, and then it goes right back and forth, a little hot potato, hot potato, and the Gators get it. 60 seconds remaining in the first half, and then an over and back violation called against Florida. And that was just a simple pass and catch turnover. And Kelly Ray Finley upset with her team because that's something they talked about in shoot around was don't assume the offensive player is just going to be open. Georgia defends the perimeter extremely well. You got to work, you got to cut to get open. It's not just going to be a simple here pass along the wing, easy peasy, not against Georgia. Bates in the Smith. Smith with great position, but again, offensive boards create offensive opportunities just like that. Check out the effort from Smith. Establishes her presence, but goes and gets it. That's the key with offensive rebound. You got to go and get it. Love the hustle and energy that she's brought off the bench. Just the spark that Georgia needed to close out the second quarter. Can Florida respond? They're hanging tight to a one-point lead. Smith being guarded by Chloe Chapman. And Chapman reaching in. And a personal foul whistled against the junior. Morrison stealing it on the inbound. Georgia trying to come up with it. Possession arrow. I say it's a jump ball. Possession arrow goes to the Bulldog. So 
So Georgia can hold for the final shot of the first half and perhaps gain their first lead of the ball game. Chapman decides to pull up the jumper, pops in and out. It bounces around, stays with Georgia 1.1 seconds remaining. The key for Florida here with for a while. one second tip is, is offensive rebounding. If you're, if you're Florida, you got to clear out that paint. They tried to live it up for Zoisha Smith, couldn't come away with it. However, the Bulldogs came back on a tear in the second quarter. 34-33, a close one in Gainesville as we send it back to the studio with Alyssa Lang and Drea Carter. Welcome into the SEC Halftime Report. Alyssa Lang, Carolyn Peck here with you. Great Today's pros need today's tools, and the Home Depot is here to help. With job site delivery to keep you on site and on schedule, and equipment rentals to make sure you can take on any job. Plus, when you join Pro Extra, you'll earn perks on every dollar you spend. Earn perks four times faster when you join. Register and use your Pro Extra credit card. New tech, new tools, new ways to grow your business, all at the Home Depot. How pros get more done. Back in Gainesville, 13th ranked Georgia Bulldogs trailing by one to Florida on the road. Steffi Sorensen, Tiffany Green with you. And it was the Florida Gators who got off to the hot start, Steffi. Yeah, Tiffany, they shot 81% in that first quarter. Had six assists on nine made field goals. Jordan Merritt was obviously a big key behind that. They were unselfish. But then it was all Georgia in the second quarter. They went on a 17-2 run, scoring 19 points to just nine for the Gators. And listen, eight different players scored for Georgia. That's a good sign for Joni Taylor. There's balance, and they have depth in the absence of not having their all-everything player, Jenna Stady, on the floor today. Well, Kelly Ray Finley has seen her team come out strong in this third quarter. She mentioned, mentioned to us rebounding would be key, and thus far Georgia has won the battle on the boards through the first two quarters. More importantly, 13 of their 20 rebounds have come on the offensive glass. Third quarter underway from Exact Tech. Arena, both teams seeking their first win in Southeastern Conference play. Kiki Smith, who had that one contested but still goes in. And Kiki Smith is now in double digits. She has 11 points. And a terrific play call by Kelly Wright Finley to start this third quarter. Knowing her team didn't necessarily finish the second quarter the way that they wanted to. Bates short, Tonders with the rebound. And obviously we saw Florida knocking down shots in that opening quarter, as you mentioned. What do they need to do here in the second half that you felt worked well for them through the first two quarters? Well, we heard Coach Beck talk about it at the half. And said, you know, they were playing inside out and they were playing unselfish basketball. See, to start the game, that great back screen to get Kiki Smith open, that's team basketball. It's sharing the basketball, making the extra pass. That's really what got them and built the lead in that first half. And, and I'm curious to see what, what Q Morrison does in the second half. She kind of was a little bit quiet. I know Coach Beck also mentioned she wasn't necessarily worried about that. I'm not worried about it. You know, Q Morrison's clutch, but her and Sarah Ashley Barker are two players that need to really assert themselves offensively. Morrison, who has struggled from the floor here today, missing that jumper on the other end, just one of seven from the field for Morrison, but plenty of time for her to still do damage. 
Merritt has it stripped away. The defense once again for Georgia coming up with it. Q Morrison, a little shake and move to the basket. Hello, there she is. They'll need more of that in the second half from Morrison, who was great Thursday. By coming up short and there, stepping in front of the passing lane, and it's Morrison who gathers it and once more goes to the hoop off the miss, but she's fouled. Q Morrison, just always ready to go, especially in transition. She reads defenders extremely well and puts the ball right where she knows she needs to take it. Just love the energy that she plays with. You know, on both ends of the floor, Tiffany, we always talk about her, her ability to, to defend, but her ability also to turn that into points is elite. Okay, Morrison, who is just you know, one of those players has been fun to watch and cover over her career. She's battled through some injuries, but she's come out better and stronger each time. And she's given her team their first lead of the ball game, 37-36. Lavender Briggs leading the way with that left hand. She scoops it up and in. Mallory Bates, who looks good in that first half, came up with seven points off the miss, and Florida will get the ball. You can see why Lavender Briggs is a special player. Still battling injuries, but, you know, just bouncing up off the ground with the easy layup. She makes hard things look easy. Briggs is just one of those players who was just such a bright spot coming into the league a few years back. The SEC by storm, and Jordan Merritt is continuing to build upon her improvement from freshman year to sophomore year. And, and for Georgia, and this has got to frustrate Joni Taylor. It was something that frustrated her against LSU. It's just knowing to scout. Look, we know Jordan Merritt's going to shoot the three. No one's putting their hand up and guarding her. You can't give her an easy look. It's finding ways to come up with stops. And again, not letting teams get comfortable doing what they do well. Merritt, a 46% shooter from three-point range coming into today's game. She's knocked down all three that she's attempted. It's the lashes, Tiff. I've decided. I've <laughs> I'm running an experiment on field goal percentage and lashes. I'm starting to figure out a correlation. I'm just letting you know what, what I've noticed. <laughs> you know, uh, but it, the, the, the question is now, how long do they extend out? Now, does, does that have any bearing, if at all? I'm like, now you're well, really messing with, you know, my, she... with my hypothesis, okay? Like, <laughs> it's still in the works, but there is a correlation to lashes and, and dropping There breeze. is a correlation. All right, I'm, 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 I'm going to ride with you, partner. You know what I'm saying? Perhaps you were wearing lashes back in the day. Mallory Bates, no lashes, but she sees the basket clearly, knocks down the jumper. She's got nine points. Rimdahl sees it rim off. Hugh Morrison. The take by Ricards. Ricards, who has been a lot more aggressive here today for the Gators. 
And some of that, Tiffany, is knowing that is is knowing that Jenna Stady is not out on the floor. Again, one of the best shot blockers, not just the country, not just the SEC, but in the country. The guards are going right down through the SEC logo, right at the rim. And if you're just tuning in, she's unavailable for the second straight game. Helping safety protocols leaves Stady out. Her Bulldogs trailing. So at at and everyone gets our best deals. Aren't others doing that? Others say that, but not everyone gets the best deal. Like, what if I give you a lollipop? Then I give you our best lollipop. That's not fair. At at and we think it's only fair that all customers get our best deals. And you get a choice of plans. She said everyone. It's not complicated. Only at and gives both new and existing customers our same best deals. Like up to $800 off our most popular smartphones. Florida Gators Women's Athletics Program celebrating 50 years. We, too, are celebrating here. Steffi Sorensen, Tiffany Green with you. It's the second day of the new year. Feeling good, feeling great. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing Glad to be with you. Glad to be doing some basketball. Right. And I also want to As talk about my new year. Up. New I, Year's resolutions, my in the partner. Top four. What you got, Tiff? Yeah, I think we were having a little technical difficulties. I hope that's not a sign of things to come here in this new year. But ten teams projecting for this year's NCAA tournament. LSU turning things around and doing some new things under uh, their new head coach Kim Mulkey and uh, double doubles. That's something that you like to talk about, Steffi, some of those double-doubles that we'll see some players averaging throughout the season. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that in, in, in just a little bit, right? Like, But, uh, like, walking buckets. Who, who are your favorite, like, walking buckets in the league? Well, I think if we're talking double-doubles, we got to put Tamari Key in there. I mean, she's having a stellar year at Tennessee. I think she's going to be – Getting a double double in, in league play. A couple more players flying under the radar. Marquee had 17 points earlier today in that win over Arkansas. Kelly Harper's team ranked seventh in the country, six in total out of the Southeastern Conference in the AP Top 25, including the Georgia Bulldogs, who we're watching here in action today. And some of those solutions, we talked about the resolutions. Steffi, your solutions, honey? Look, I, you know, Leah and, uh, and Asia Blackwell, they're already averaging double-doubles. But I think Jenna Stady can, can creep up there and get a double-double. Shakira Austin, if anything... She proved last year during conference play she was a double-double type player and, and a potential WNBA draft pick, and then Tamari Key. She's right there. I think that we can have five players averaging double-doubles in conference play. What do you think? And interesting. No Ryan Howard there, right? You know, the idea that, you know, Ray Burrell will be coming back. We, we'll see what, you know, she's able to do. But just, you know, the SEC, two-time SEC player of the year, not on this. Okay. So you're saying she should average a double double? Uh huh. Let's throw I it in. So. Right. And, the, and the reason players. being, yeah, yeah, we'll, we, we just got to, you know, that's an on the bubble. That's an on the bubble. Well, speaking of bubbles, we got to we got to go to Joni Taylor's <laughs> New Year's resolution <laughs> because her New Year's resolution is to take one bubble bath every week. Now, what are your thoughts on that, Tiffany? I need to know. I love it, right? So, a wife, a mother of two children, JC and Drew, she says, it's my me time. I'm not really into the whole, you know, resolution thing. And I felt like I needed to step up my game because she found a place of relaxation within the week. And you need that time for yourself, that breakaway, um, I think it's also something that's great that she can model for a doctor. 
That's a good point. And it's also on my list now. I'm not going to lie. It's on my list. <laughs> so, <laughs> self-care. Self-care is key, right? But she also took advantage of what? New Year's tradition. So she was, you know, making the collard greens and the black eyed peas and the hog mark. You know, you got to have all that for the good luck and the health and the. You, you have to participate. You got to go all in. And I, and I love that she was, you know, all in every year on her New Year's tradition. Rimdahl for three, won't go. Jordan Merritt comes up with the offensive board. Another try for Rimdahl. And Barker loses it. Kiki Smith already with four steals now, making five, and what a move from the elite defender, Kiki Smith. Sprinting up the floor is Chapman. Stone Pollings head on the floor along with Mallory Bates. Willie Chapman and Barker for Georgia. Kiki Smith, Rimdahl, Floor Tonders, Jordan Merritt, and Lavender Briggs for the Gators. Collins head working on Tonders won't go. Mallory Bates is on cleanup duty on the other side. Georgia again doing such a great job on the offensive glass. 15 in this game. And, and Jordan Isaacs, she's always a player when she gets in there. She makes her minutes count. And whether she's blocking shots or she's getting offensive rebounds, she brings them energy. Again, Collins said. Misses the shot, Florida no block out, and if that was a concern for Kelly Ray Finley was that weak side board against the depth that Joni Taylor has in those post player positions. And Jordan Isaac giving good minutes. Isaacs, the junior out of Alpharetta, Georgia, will take a breather. Jordan Isaac with six points. Meanwhile, Jordan Merritt at the line for the Gators. It's one of two. Florida basketball after 14th turnover for Georgia. Merritt, who's been money from three, her first miss from downtown. Briggs, a little heavy to the bucket. And the miss. Hollingshead gets to the center of the lane and gets it to go. Offensive foul called against Lavender Briggs. When you take a look at these freshmen, though, for Georgia, Joni Taylor it feels very confident about what they will be able to do because they have bright futures ahead of them, and, and they are a large part of the success that Georgia could see this season. And they're just going to continue to get better and better as they play more minutes and playing more minutes together. You know, Joni Taylor didn't necessarily shy away from saying, you know, very similar to a player like Sarah Ashley Barker last year where she didn't necessarily know what they were in. And as freshmen, she feels the same way about Jillian Hollingshed and Reagan Richardson. 
it's because, you know, you run certain plays in the non-conference where you get to conference play, and then you're tweaking plays within plays. So it's a lot for freshmen to take in, right? It, it, you're trying to learn the system. Now we're changing it, and we're going to add a few things, but then we're going to change this. But nonetheless, you see when they get out there and they play well together, their athleticism and their skill set, I mean, they're two McDonald's All-Americans for a reason. And then go on the shot clock. Ricard takes it to the basket and she's fouled. After knocking down a couple of free throws on the other end, Sarah Ashley Barker picks up her third personal foul. So a couple from the charity strike for Ricard. Junior out of Queens, New York. Knocks down both. Alicia Smith checking back into the game for Georgia. Morrison had a good look, passed it up over to Zoisha Smith, and the baseline J is true. Kiki Smith stripped up on the way to the basket. 3.4 seconds remaining. So a couple free throws on the way. Lucia Smith called for her first personal. The South Paul knocks down the first. And Florida grabs the lead right back. Three-quarter court from Chapman won't go, but tight ball game in Gainesville. Georgia has won eight in the series. However, they're trailing by one going into the final period. Coming off an excellent 21-7 season last year, Georgia predicted Number four in the preseason poll, the Bulldogs made it all the way to the SEC championship game and then on to the NCAA tournament after making it to the second round. Meanwhile, maybe not as much expectations outside of the Florida Gator program. Some underestimating the Gators perhaps picked to finish 11th in the preseason poll, but this is a group who won four in a row and has a chance to knock off the 13th ranked team in the country to open league play. And if you're Joni Taylor and your ball club, you, you don't want to start out conference play 0-2. And, and, and one losing on your home court and then a game against Florida that you know, you're expected to win, but Florida rising to the occasion. This is a very confident bunch when you watch them, Steffi. Well, uh, Georgia has struggled to defend dribble penetration, and, and that's the scout against Florida. They're looking to get to the rim, including players like Nina Ricard and Kiki Smith, Lab Briggs. That's their M.O., and Georgia has let them get into the paint. 26, make that 27 today, points in the paint for the Gators. And it is worth repeating that Georgia is without their rim protector in Jenna Stady for the second consecutive game unavailable due to health and safety protocols. So while they still have length on the inside, Stady, who is a steely veteran, 
not on the floor for Georgia. They'll rely upon young blood like Hollingshead to be able to try to pick up some of the slack. Rimdahl, wide open look for three, and she drains it. Well, Florida has knocked down six triples today. And for Florida, they have to keep this offense going. Remember in that second quarter, Tiffany, where they kind of started to have offensive lulls. Georgia got back in the game. They built back up. They were able to take a lead. So now Georgia, hot shooting here to start the fourth quarter. Can they maintain it and be composed down the stretch? Right now, the Florida defense just smothering the Bulldogs. And again, Ricard's running the floor. She leaves it short. Morrison over to Sarah Ashley Barker. Barker can't connect. Gavin Nicholson, I just want to right there. Nicholson with her first wow. two points of the game and then back the other way. There's Faith Duke. Last touch by the Bulldogs. Tony's kind of frustrated with Sarah Ashley Barker turning the ball over something that she wants her to clean up as conference play continues to go on. Either you got to take it and reverse it back over or get the right angle. Make one extra dribble. Take the right angle to get it into your post player. Cards. You know, that SEC logo turn around. Jumper won't fall. Five points separating these two teams. Jillian Hollingshead. Missing there. Now, Kiki Smith, who is. 15 points today, seven rebounds for her team to go along with four assists. And she's hoping she can notch her first win against the Georgia Bulldogs throughout her tenure in Gainesville. That play is Jordan kind of symbolic of why Kelly raised it. Tiffany Jordan Merritt playing that four position and, and having the ability to not only stretch the four but also get to the free throw line and in the, to the paint creates a problem for Georgia because they put her in a pick and roll position with another post player, which makes a post player come out on the wing and try to guard her. Merritt obviously having the advantage. And with that free throw, tying a career high of 18 points. She also dropped 18 earlier this season against Talvin. Gators lead by seven. Six and a half to go. Cutting into it right there is Jordan Isaacs. The handoff stolen by Hugh Morrison, and Morrison up and in. And it feels like a deja vu all over again. Anytime you watch a Georgia game, you can likely see Q Morrison coming up with the steal and taking it coast to coast. Almost like a quarterback passing it off to a running back on that play. That one tapped away Here's by Georgia Nicholson. Defense. Collecting it was Chapman. Can't get it to fall. Georgia's defense, one of the best in the country, picking up their intensity, doing it without one of their best defenders in Jenna Stady around the rim. 
and you feel like it's Hugh Morris in time. She's going to settle down her team here offensively, run through their offense, try and get a high percentage shot, double on ball coming. And too tall for Javin Nicholson, empty possession there. They turn it over. Both teams slowing it down, working in the half court. Kiki Smith over to Jordan Merritt. And Merritt with a little bump from Barker. She's called for the personal foul. 4.43 remaining in Gainesville. Well, update from a tight one in Baton Rouge between the Aggies and the Tigers. Alexis Morris so far with 24 points. Pack, it's been close. Hey, the more things change, the more they say the same. For the last six have been decided by four points or less. We'll keep you posted on that one, ladies. Back to you. Well, thanks so much. And we've got a tight one here in Gainesville. Let's just remind our viewers, if you're just tuning in, Georgia, who has really controlled the series over the last eight games, searching for their ninth straight win over the Gators. Meanwhile, Florida trying to bring in their first SEC opener win since 2013 when they did it against Mississippi State. So here's a chance for Kelly Ray Finley's team to keep this momentum going in Gainesville. And out of the timeout, on the inbound, Q Morrison again. That's how she scored primarily most of her points today off the field in transition and taking it to the bucket. She, she is the best DB in the game. I mean, she reads the ball, she tips it, gets out in transition. I mean, that's just what she does. And I feel like it just gives Georgia just an extra pep in their step, just a one-point game now. I'll tell you, you know, they could potentially use her hands and ball-hawking skills in that <laughs> College Football Playoff Championship game January 10th as the Bulldogs football team will take on Alabama. Q Morrison, though, is getting it done on the court. And Georgia grabs the lead right back with just under four minutes to go. Briggs looking for a little space and opportunity. It's short, and they say Coons foot was on the line. So Florida will Tiffany, keep it with six Florida, seconds to go on the shot clock. They have got to take care of the basketball. 16 turnover, or six, six, Georgia has 16 steals against Florida, and they're turning that into points. So they've got to value the, each possession. Plays like that, you just can't afford. Too much at stake. You know, Georgia, who is so good on the defensive end, as we've mentioned throughout this broadcast, and you could come to help them down the stretches. Kiki Smith wanted to make sure that Q Morrison didn't get that field goal to go. Well, Florida has had success with that full court press, either creating a turnover or speeding Georgia up, making them uncomfortable. But well, Georgia was ready for it then. Hugh Morrison leaks out, able to get a quick strike at the basket. And she's a terrific free throw shooter, too. Well, Hugh Morrison knocking down the first of two, 86% from the line. And we saw those trying to throw off her game, but not shaking at all. Still perfect from the free throw line. And now a three-point advantage for the 13th ranked Bulldog. Latin to Briggs, trying to even it up, and she does. Boy, 
boy, this has been an excellent ball game. We saw Florida get off to that hot start. They led by as many as 16. A good second quarter effort helped to even things down in Georgia continuing have a great fighting spirit and Hugh Morrison does it take over time. And they needed her most in this second half and thus far she is delivering for them. Not the best shooting performance of the afternoon. However, She's been able to find her way to the charity strike. Create some havoc on the defensive end with steel. And help her get points on the board for a team as Georgia leading by two. Ricard on the tape. Ball game. Mallory Bates and Bates, who has had a really nice afternoon. Eleven points now, five of eight from the floor, along with five rebounds in her twenty one minutes of play. Under two from Gainesville. The pull up from Ricard once again. And Ricard continues to heat up. Getting hot at the right time. Tie ball game. And Morrison once more on the attack. And she'll shoot a couple more. Tie ball game at 67 all. The Georgia Bulldogs in search of their first win in SEC play. So again, Q Morrison getting it done from the free throw line. A perfect 8 of 8 today. A whistle on the floor, and both teams will retreat to their benches. It looks like Mallory Bates will get some attention. She may be bleeding, so they'll wrap her up. Boy, what a win this could be for Kelly Ray Finley's group if they're able to knock off Georgia. And as you mentioned earlier, Steffi, the importance for Joni Taylor's team to not start out in conference play with an 0-2 record. Lavender Briggs with the pull-up. It's short. Q Morrison comes skying in to get the rebound and then a jump ball on the court. And it'll stay with Florida. Excuse me, possession arrow with the Bulldogs. Minute 22 to go. Georgia has made their last three field goals. And clamping to this two-point lead. Back in the hands of their super senior, Q Morrison. Morrison working on Smith. 
the crossover, the pass inside, knocked away in seven seconds to work with on the shot clock for Georgia. On the inbound, it may have been tipped away by Smith. The officials having a quick conference. And you see a very spirited crowd for those in attendance at Exact Tech Arena. Well, this is a group who has taken a couple of teams to the wire. Knocking off number two in the state, notching a victory earlier in the review. season against Notre Dame. And now Georgia trying to bounce back after a tough top 20 matchup in the shoe. The officials going over to review likely who the ball last went out on. They ruled it off of the Gators and Kiki Smith. And you have to have some conclusive evidence to say otherwise. Our production crew doing a great job of trying to zoom in there to see who it, whose fingertips it last went off of. And it's going to be a really tough call. Again, you have to have enough conclusive evidence to overturn. The question is, did Q Morrison touch it just after Kiki Smith did? And perhaps you could say maybe yes there with the trajectory of the ball. But again, it's got to be definitive. And a timeout taken. Red ball confirmed. On the court. Here, less than a minute left to play in the fourth quarter in Gainesville between Georgia and Florida. You're listening to Carolyn Peck and Alyssa Lang in studio. We've had some technical issues throughout the broadcast, so we're going to do our best to bring you the last minute of this one. It's been a tight game all afternoon, Peck. This is the kind of play you expect, though, when you start conference play, certainly between these two opponents who we know don't love each other to begin with. <laughs> and you know that both of these teams hang their hat on defense, and I expect for Georgia the ball to work its way through Q Morrison and for Florida. Look, Lavender Briggs has made some big shots, and Kiki Smith, She's got to run the show for the Florida Gators. Briggs so far, three for 11, seven points on the night. Florida shooting 45% from the field. Georgia at 43%. You see the score. It's been close all game long. Georgia with a two-point lead right now, 69-67. We talked about Q Morrison, had a bit of a slow start in the first half, but she's heated up in the second. If you're Joni Taylor, I know you just hit on it a little bit. What are you trying to do right now to try to keep this lead for Georgia? Well, with Florida having the, the basketball right now, Q Morrison is going to be that one player you can count on that will make the big defensive plays. Kelly, Kelly Ray Finley, she now is has drawn up and has Julie Plank on her staff. Julie Plank was a longtime assistant at Stanford under Tara Vanderveer and special situations. And I would look for Kiki Smith get a penetrating action, but not too soon, not too soon. And if the penetration is taken away, then they'll have the kick out. Smith so far with 15 points on the night. We were just talking about how it feels like she's been at Florida forever, has consistently been a game changer there as Merritt gets the and one or gets the foul, excuse me. 
Well, Jordan Merritt, a, a sophomore, a sophomore, 18 points, has made some big buckets against a ranked team of the University of Georgia. Five of six so far from the free throw line. Going to try to get Florida closer. Misses the first. And now with all the timeouts that Georgia has, I have to expect that on a make or miss, if Georgia gets the rebound, Jody Taylor is going to want a timeout and advance the basketball. Right as you said it, right on cue, not Q Morrison, right on cue for Joni Taylor as we stay here uh, as Georgia calls this timeout. Still a two-point game. What's important for Florida down the stretch here, knowing who Georgia's playmakers are, and it, it seems obvious what they may try to do offensively. Did you see who Joni Taylor just put in the game? Sarah Ashley Barker. If you watch that Georgia game versus NC State, who came off that screen and they made a big money three, it was Barker. So you have to always know where she is on the court. And then, again, cue, do you cue her up? Because this is a player that can make plays off the bounce. Florida, they've got to switch off screens. They've got to keep the Georgia players in front of them and force them to make a tough two. Sarah Ashley Barker with nine points so far. Georgia's stat sheet spread pretty evenly. You got Q Morrison with 16. Bates coming in with 11 points. Isaacs with eight. Barker with nine, as we said. See what Georgia draws up here to try to extend the lead over Florida. Just over 49 seconds left to play in this fourth quarter in Gainesville. Now, and Georgia could go quick, score it, because then there would be enough time if Florida got another possession that Georgia would have the last possession of the game. Foul here? Nope. Yeah, uh, Florida had a foul to give. Yeah, you got to get the ball in the hands of Q Morrison. Tough defense from Florida. They know exactly what George is trying to do in this scenario. We've seen it time after time. There it is, easy two for Georgia. They extend the lead, 71-67 now. Just over 20 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. The most experienced player on the floor. You want her handling the ball when the shot clock is running down. And Q Morrison does a nice find of Mallory Bates. Little drop pass down low and Bates with the finish. Georgia always has that advantage, it feels like, whether it's Q or Stady or whoever is that playmaker with the ball in their hands. Oftentimes drawing two defenders and then you see there leaving one open under the basket. What does Florida do now to try to climb back a four-point deficit with just over 20 seconds left to play. Well, now, if I can see this correctly, Florida doesn't have, they have two timeouts le yep. left. So they're advancing the basketball. The Gators have to go score quick. Best available basket. And they don't have to have a three. They can go in quick for the two, possibility of getting the and one, or on the rotation in, then you can kick out for the three. They have, they have plenty of capable three-point shooters, especially when we're talking about shooters like Lavender Briggs, Jordan Merritt. Jordan Merritt so far leading the Gators on the day. When you look at the points category, she's got 18 so far, three for five from the three-point line. Both of these teams shooting very close from the field. Georgia shooting 44%, Florida shooting 45%, but Florida right now 41 from the three-point line. They've had a lot more success than the dogs have so far. They're going to have to come up with a big bucket here to try to close this deficit. Do you try to foul here if you're Georgia? I mean, that's an option, and some some coaches will do that. I say just play it out because a lot of times when you go to foul and you hit a player in the act of shooting, then they get three free throws. Merritt no good there. Kiki trying to play cleanup. It goes. Kiki Smith. Keeping the Gators in it, 71-69 now, less than 10 seconds left to play in this fourth quarter. Just a reminder, you're hearing us in the studio because the broadcast crew was having some technical difficulties calling this game, so we're taking you all the way to the end here.
to see who ends up getting the dub on this first Sunday of women's hoops in the new year. Welcome to conference play. We've had some close games all day long, and this one is no exception. But that tends to be the case when Georgia and Florida get together, no matter the sport, Peg. Well, you want this kind of play just to show you the intensity that is in store for the rest of the SEC season. Georgia looking for their ninth straight win against Florida. The Dogs coming in at 11 and 2 so far on the season. The Gators just behind them at 10 and 3. Florida looking for their first SEC opening win since January 2nd, 2013. Kelly Ray Finley would certainly love to get that dub in their first conference opener especially against their border border rival in the Georgia Bulldogs a really talented squad that I think not just in the SEC but nationally a lot of people are on alert with what Joni Taylor and the dogs could do this year well Joni Taylor has the balance uh, on the perimeter and inside and remember she's playing this game without Jenna Stady who has been a starter for the last few years for the Gators and so or for the Georgia Bulldogs and so right now with 10 seconds left, the most important thing Georgia has to do is get the ball inbounded. Florida, they're going to have to they're going to have to foul right away. They cannot allow much time, but it's tough to find a tough to catch a player like Hugh Morrison. Yeah, she's speedy, isn't she? <laughs> as you saw Florida with the foul there exactly as Peck just said. Georgia going to try to play keep away to run the clock out here. And they'll do just that in Gainesville. The dogs trying to run away with a 71-69 win over Florida. Just over one second left to play. I, I, I tried to tell you as we were watching, Q Morrison, she may have a slow point production in that first half, but when the game is on the line, this is a player that really steps up her game. I think your words were, just wait, she's going to turn up. <laughs> she's about <laughs> to turn up, and she did in the second half, which surprises no one familiar with the dogs, that's for sure. Uh, 18 points on the day, 10 for 10, perfect from the free throw line, which you certainly have to do as we approach conference play. Those are those, yeah, duh things that we talk about all the time, but you have to make your free throws if you want to win these close oh, games. Oh, yeah, that has been something that's been a bugaboo for a lot of teams this season is not being able to consistently knock down those free throws. And a lot of time it's not technique, it's mental. You start missing a lot, you know, or not, the ball's not going in, you start questioning yourself, start messing with your technique, and then you overthink. It's like a golf swing. Yeah. Hey, I start thinking too much, and the ball's going to go wide left. Even when I'm not thinking too much, to be fair, my golf swing's still <laughs> pretty bad. I'll, I'll be very honest. Uh, you, you see the numbers there for Q Morrison. We were just talking about it in the first half. Peck said she's going to heat up. She's going to get there. Don't you worry. Two points in the first half, 16 coming in the second half. As you watched her play this season, Peck, not just today, what makes her so dangerous? Well, because this is a, a woman that loves to play defense. And a lot of players, their defense is affected on whether or not they're making shots. That's not the case for Q Morrison. If she's getting steals and she's making things happen on the defensive end, then that makes her offense come alive. And then when she starts distributing the basketball, great things happen for the Georgia Bulldogs. Florida with a last stitch effort here, lobbing it up. No good as you hear the buzzer go off and that will be it from Gainesville. The Georgia Bulldogs get the dub over Florida, 73-69, the final of the Dogs. Victorious on the road as we open up conference play here in the SEC. Shout out to Tiffany Green, Steffi Sorensen, who had the call for most of that game, did a great job under the circumstances. Congratulations to the Georgia Bulldogs on their win. Let's get you to our next game here on the SEC Network.